Before I start this review, I do want to make it very clear that uh, I love Sonic the Hedgehog. So if I do sound a little biased, you, uh, you might be correct in assuming that. So Sonic the Hedgehog has always been a huge fascination of mine. I've always found him just a very superb, well done character. I really just like Sonic. I love the whole Sonic universe. I'm a fan and uh, that's the best way that I can put it. So with that being said, Sonic Forces, where does it stand with me? So the quick and easy answer is it's not bad. Uh, it's definitely not the best in the series, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it might be one of the best 3D Sonic games since maybe Sonic Adventure 2. Blasphemy, I'm sure. But realistically, I think that the game is very superb and I think that it's also a really, really good addition to the 3D Sonic lineup. Now, I do love Sonic Generations. I do like Sonic Lost World. Um, hell, <laughs> I like Sonic 06. So if that goes to show you anything, I think I have some credit here to talk about any of the 3D Sonic games. I played all of them and I actually somewhat enjoyed all of them in some way, shape or form. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, hey, Sonic Mania come out. What, what's the deal there? Well, I like that game too, but I, I, you know, I've gotten to the point where I've, I've played 2D Sonic quite a bit in my lifetime. And when I play a Sonic game, I want to play something new. I want to play something fresh and I like Sonic 3D games. I do. I still love me some Sonic 2D games, that's for sure. But Sonic 3D games, also I really like. The story of Sonic Forces is pretty by the numbers. You're not going to find anything here out of the ordinary. Pretty typical setup. Robotnik has incorporated the help of some mystical creature to help him with his plans of world domination. Blah, blah, blah. We've already seen this a million times. But I will say the story here is a little bit more dire prior to other recent more Sonic games. The story has a little bit more dark feel to it, especially with Sonic being captured within the first five minutes and basically being captured for six months while Knuckles rallies up the team and he's the commander and if I don't remember Knuckles really being this serious and dark. None of this is good, Vector. That's why it's called war. War. War never changes. But with that being said, it does show a little bit more of a dire situation in the Sonic universe. I will say that the story was by the numbers, nothing impressive, uh, but it's what I came to expect in a Sonic 3D game. And uh, hey, I mean, I'm not mad at it for that. It did its job. It did, it, did, it did what it was supposed to do. So with Sonic being captured and Knuckles rallying the rest of the troops, there's a new hero that's introduced. And that hero is you. It's a custom character that you get to make and you can design it in your own way and you're rewarded after every stage with different outfits and gloves and shoes to make your character unique or to make the way that you would make them look. And I think it was a really cool element. Uh, I really appreciate that they put this part into the game. At first, I'm not going to lie, I was very skeptical of this. I thought it was just a tie-in gimmick, but no, it works for, for the most part. You basically play as Sonic as you play as his character. He doesn't have the boost mechanic like Sonic does, but he does. He is given a weapon, which is pretty cool, and it does work for the most part. It works really well. But don't worry, don't worry. Do You definitely get to play as Sonic, new Sonic and old Sonic. And old Sonic, I'm not quite sure why he's here. But after doing a little bit of reading, I did find out this story is a tie-in with Sonic Mania. Uh, and that's why he's there. So it was kind of a cool if they did that. I didn't even realize that I actually had to research that because I was really curious why the hell old school Sonic or Sonic from uh, Sonic Generations just makes an appearance. He's just there. Uh, but it does make sense if you play Sonic Mania and, and it does kind of tie in. The gameplay in Sonic Forces, yes. Uh, a lot of autopilot, a lot of autopilot. And honestly, I mean, a lot of the other 3D Sonic games do have autopilot in it. You know, that's kind of what I was expecting, but I will say it was more heavy on this side. I do say that they do this to alleviate a lot of the glitches that may be found in more recent 3D Sonic games, but I will say there's a, they're here, they're present as well here, but very minuscule. It's a lot more minimum than they were in other 3D Sonic games. But for the most part, the gameplay is really solid. There's two different ways to play here. You play as old school Sonic or the, the 2D Sonic from Sonic Generations, and you play as new 3D Sonic in 3D worlds with a little bit of 2D elements sprinkled in here and there. And then you play as the new hero, which is a new customizable character that you're given. All three ways are basically Sonic-ish. Sonic from Sonic Generations, the old Sonic has its old 2D levels. And I will say, hey, Sonic Mania just came out. And if you're really looking for a 2D way to play Sonic, yeah, you might want to go that route. They're good. They're okay. They're nothing special. But after playing Sonic Mania and the 2D levels here, I mean, they just feel, I don't know, not as, I mean, they're not as good. They're definitely just not as good. Sonic Mania have really perfected that. But with the 3D coat of it, I mean, they're, they're, they're enjoyable for the most part. They're nothing groundbreaking. Sonic Mania is definitely the way to play a 2D Sonic game at this day and age. But anyway, they're okay. They're serviceable. It's by the 
numbers, you get the little power-ups. You run to the right, go to the left, you jump on enemies, you spin dash. But they did bring in the mechanic from Sonic Mania where you can do the, the spin dash if you hit the ground by holding down the A button if you're in ball form. So that was cool and nice that they implemented that. Of course, we have 3D Sonic, which is the main mechanic of this game, and it's great. And I will say there is a level in here that really might be one of the best 3D Sonic levels ever. It is fantastic. It's great. But I will say it's a little glitchy here and there, but very minuscule, like I said before. Nothing like the prior Sonic games. But I will say that the boost formula that they brought back is one of my favorite mechanics. Very heavy on the autopilot, but at the same time, I'm kind of accustomed to that. And it is a little bit... Uh, it's a little wonky here and there. Now, if I can talk about 2D Sonic and 3D Sonic when it goes to the 2D platforming parts of the game, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the mechanics here, but I had a way more unnecessary deaths than necessary. The jump mechanics and the platforming just seem a little off. Sonic just doesn't seem so versatile with his jumping here. And that's really disappointing coming from Sonic Mania where that whole thing was based on it. And it was great, it was fantastic. You would think they would implement that really good here, but no, the, the, I feel like there were so many unnecessary deaths by just falling off of a platform because the jump just didn't feel right. It didn't work right. It just didn't seem Sonic-ish. So I'm not quite sure why that was the way it is. Hopefully maybe that's something they could fix in the future. But either way, nonetheless, it's still enjoyable. There will be a little bit of frustrating parts when you jump in the 2D platforms, but the 3D part is basically autopilot. But there is quite a bit of things to do here and there. It is, it is fun for the most part. I actually really enjoyed it. And like I said, there are really cool moments in here when it comes to the 3D parts of Sonic. Really cool new, not new, mechanics but just the way that you would the visuals and how he ties into the stages i thought was fantastic now the whole new mechanic of this game is the new hero he does run like sonic but he doesn't have the boost formula and that's fine that's fair enough he is giving this wispin and basically it's this kind of can cannon type thing and there's different ways to use it and upgrade it there's a few different forms of it but i stuck with the lightning one that was the one that i primarily used it has like a whip like lightning attack and all of them have this like uh wispin or the wisp like from sonic colors where you get different power-ups and depending on which gun that you choose, you can use that throughout the level for different things. Like I said, I stuck mostly with the lightning one because that's the one that really appealed to me. But there are different ways to play it, which I think is a cool way. If you choose, if you're not liking this one, you definitely have a different way to play through that stage with the new hero. So with the new hero, yes, absolutely. You can customize this character to your liking. I think it was a pretty cool concept. I mean, I think it was a little tacked on, a little gimmicky, but still at the same time, I actually didn't mind it. It was kind of nice to have my own little character dialed up with some Sonic apparel, but it was, it was a nice mechanic. I mean, it was pretty cool. But basically, Basically, these three different ways to play are all combined and they all do feel very, very Sonic-ish. I would say there's almost a fourth way to play, but it's kind of more of the same. Basically, you'll team up with your new hero and Sonic and you can kind of switch between their abilities, between speed and uh, the Wisp and attack with your new character. And they also have this kind of new mechanic, which is pretty cool. You kind of team up together and do like a super double dash, which is definitely definitely autopilot, but it's very cool to just, like watch what's on screen. I do want to point out that surprisingly enough, the boss battles here were fantastic. They were very different and versatile to a degree. A lot of them are you running on a straight track, attacking the boss at different times, opening up for attacks, powering, you know, powering towards them with your boost formula. But still, nonetheless, the, the, some of the boss battles here, I think were really, really well done. I really enjoyed some of them. They were very, very visually creative and also gameplay very somewhat creative, but I really appreciate it. You know, I I, I love Sonic bosses or stages, especially when I can run at full speed. That's where you take most of the light of Sonic 3D games. So it really, really focuses on speed and attacking the boss. And I, I think those are perfect Sonic bosses stages. I will say the, bo the boss stages here were actually very well done. And there are a few boss stages on different forms. That's 2D Sonic, 3D Sonic, and the new hero. They were all very, very enjoyable. I do want to touch on the music just for a quick second. The music is like 90s pop rock and it's it's awesome it's complete sonic it's complete sonic feel to it and it really fits the tone of what's going on i really appreciated it it's nothing groundbreaking there's nothing new or crazy crazy good uh but it just fits the tone of a sonic game uh, it gives you those sonic feels especially when listening to it but no the, the music here was also fantastic the game is short very very short we're talking three and a half to maybe four five hours short if if you even want to even maybe do a little bit more and go back and do a few things i completed the main campaign i'm not really looking to go back and play more of it uh, i kind of enjoyed what i had i may go back and play a few more levels just to play around with maybe some of the other wispins to kind of see like what those things really bring to the table but i think that i got out of it what i needed 40 bucks i think is a little heavy on the asking price but hey um you know like i said th there is a little replayability and that's i would really say that's only if you're a diehard sonic fan three 
3D Sonic fan, are you really going to go back and replay this? I am, but honestly, I think that at this point, it was really good, but I think it was definitely only good for one playthrough. There's not a really big incentive here to really make me want to go back and revisit it. All in all, with Sonic Force's tone, its gameplay, its presentation, I'm gonna say that I think that it's a definitely a great, solid Sonic 3D game. Like I said, it's very heavy on the autopilot. It's definitely not great on the 2D side, and I'm not really even sure why they implemented that. I mean, I feel like that we had already our 2D feel of Sonic this year with Sonic Mania, and to really bring it into this game, they definitely could have just nixed that and stuck focused on the 3D levels. I would appreciate that a lot more. But the ones that are here, like I said, they're not terrible. They're just really just not on the same level as something as Sonic Mania and definitely coming off of Sonic Mania to this game it's just really disappointing to see the mechanics that are introduced in the 2D levels. So could I suggest Sonic Forces to you? Kind of. Kind of. I will say that if you really like 3D Sonic games, you're a diehard fan, you definitely gotta check out what's here. There's some definitely new cool mechanics. The new hero feature and implementing your own changes on your character is a nice touch. The story is by the numbers. It's nothing here that isn't you haven't seen before. So I would say if you're a diehard Sonic fan and you really just love Sonic, this is definitely a must buy at full price to a degree. You could definitely wait for a price drop. I wouldn't see that being uh, not happening in a long time. That would probably be sooner rather than later, especially for what's given in the reviews that are given for it. I I don't see it staying that price for very long. At the same time, if you're not a huge Sonic fan, you could definitely pass over this. You're not really missing too much as far as story-wise goes. This gameplay is more of the same. There's nothing new here that's just gonna make you really love Sonic that if you didn't love them that are 3D games before. It's pretty much by the numbers and you're not really missing out on anything inventive or new. If I can speak from a personal note though, I did try playing this game the first time for the first 45 minutes and I was highly, highly disappointed. And I felt that it was really on autopilot. I really didn't understand and why it was just so easy, but I will say when the game prompts you when you start it, there's a normal mode and a hard mode. Even if you've never even played a Sonic game, like I suggest if you play on the hard mode, it's for people who play Sonic games. Even if you've never even played a Sonic game, definitely play it on the hard mode. You'll find it more enjoyable that way. And in, even in hard mode, trust me, this is nothing of a challenge. I basically beat every level in under two to two and a half minutes, and I got an S ranking. I think there was maybe a handful of stages, maybe three or four, that maybe I got an A, and maybe one or two that I got a B. And the ones that I got a B on are the, definitely the ones that were having that crappy 2D jumping messed up mechanic that I was speaking of earlier. The game is an absolute breeze. You can go through it in, like I said, a couple of hours. And, you know, for 40 bucks or four hours might not be justifiable to a lot of people. But me being a Sonic fan, I could definitely justify it. And if you're a Sonic fan too, I think you should too. If you're not, hey, like I said, you're not messing too much here. So this is Kamikaze Soundways. I appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen, checking out my review of Sonic Forces. Much obliged for watching. And I'll check you out in the next one. Later.